So Harrison, you're in here. Okay. Um, and you have to, that door is going to shut. Okay. Um, and then Dan's right here. Hi, Harrison. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Good. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to start with Corey Spector. Hey, Harrison, can you hear me? Yep. So I know a lot goes into studying the weather and the wind when you're kicking in an outdoor stadium. How much of the stadium dimensions goes into it? When I think of Raymond James, I think of the open ends on the sides. So how do you, uh, how do you study the dimensions of a stadium? That's interesting. Um, when I think of the dimensions of the stadium, I mainly think of um, the in Pittsburgh, Heinz Field, how you know they have that kind of open end zone with – the you know the water's right there and that can kind of add a lot of wind on that end zone but for Tampa you know it was nice that we were able to play there earlier in the year and I didn't notice too much wind there um, I know both end zones are pretty similar I guess and that they're both kind of open I know one end zone has the ship there um, I mainly focus though on you know if it's going to rain for this game I think it's 70 percent chance of rain and then how high the wind's going to be and um, the fact that we did play there and it wasn't too bad, I'm not that concerned. And luckily we have, you know, two hours on the field before the game to kind of get used to the wind as well. But um, that's an interesting question. But, you know, the fact that we played there before and it wasn't too crazy, you know, um, yeah, I feel good with it. We're going to go next to Colin. Hi, Harrison. Greetings from uh, this side of the Atlantic. I'm in Dublin, Ireland. Um, I want to take you back to your Georgia Tech days because you actually played in Ireland uh, against Boston College. Could you talk a little bit about uh, that experience? Yeah, no, I'll always uh, remember that game, you know, uh, playing at Georgia Tech. I think we might have been in Dublin, Ireland for three days or so. We got to see the, the city and obviously play in the uh, that historic stadium, I'm forgetting, forgetting the name, but um, no, it's definitely an awesome memory. And, you know, to, to hear all the fans out there, especially cheering for, for myself and the punter, uh, it was a pretty amazing experience, especially growing up a soccer fan and then playing in that, in that stadium. We got to see a bunch of different other uh, sports there, other sports teams came and played. I forget the names of the, uh, the different sports that they showed us, um, but definitely a, a memorable experience. And uh, thankfully we were able to, get the win against Boston College, and it made the trip back home a lot more enjoyable. Thanks very much. And we're going to go next to Jason. Hey, Harrison. Just, just going back to the, you know, preparing as a kicker for a game in a different climate, you know, how does the, the temperature maybe impact where you practice this entire week in Kansas City, maybe indoors, but how does that temperature impact maybe a bit warmer in Tampa Bay? Yeah, the the humidity and the temperature is going to affect ball flight. One thing that we've been doing here is just practicing indoors a lot more, cranking the heat up. So, you know, we're practicing at basically room temperature probably. You know, outside it is it is colder. But, um, you know, I, I always say if you can kick in, in cold weather, then you'll be fine in warm weather. The warm weather will be easier and the ball will fly farther and you'll be able to feel more of the ball on your foot. So – I think, uh, you know, we actually kind of have a good here because the, the days that we do kick outside, it'll be cold and windy. And then going to Tampa, you know, there might be some rain, but it'll at least uh, be warmer. And I think it should be an easier environment than the cold environment here in, in Kansas City. 
Great, we're gonna go next to Blair. Hi, Harrison. So going back, I mean, starting in high school through college and even now, you've broken a lot of records. Do you think about it as you're playing? I mean, thinking of right now, are you thinking about the records you're going to break in the future? And if so, what are things that you want to accomplish? Um, only record I really think about is uh, career field goal percentage, I'd say. I think um, that's a good indicator of, you know, what percent of a kicker are you, you know, like uh, some years you have a lot of opportunities to kick tons of field goals and go to the pro bowl and be all pro. Some years you don't have that many opportunities, but you know, I'm big on longevity. I'd like to play for a long time. Um, at least right now it's a goal of mine to, you know, surpass Vinatieri and, and uh, Morton Anderson and guys like that who've just kicked for, for so many years. So I think longevity and career field goal percentage are, are things that I look at. But as far as other stats, you know, how many field goals you made, how many you made in a row, um, you know, I just try to take it one kick at a time and, and you'll probably break some records along the way if you're, uh, if you're lucky. So, yeah, the longevity and then career field goal percentage, I'd say, I, um, I guess I, I care about the most. The rest of the stuff, it, it'll come as, as you play and continue to do well. And we're going to go next to Alec Lace. Hey, Harrison, what's doing? I host a show called First Class Fatherhood. I focus on fatherhood and family life. I'm a Catholic like yourself there. I was wondering, um, how important is your faith in raising your kids? And what are the top values that you're hoping to instill in your kids growing up? Super important. You know, it's one thing I'm probably the most proud of, um, you know, my beautiful wife. And then, you know, we have two kids now. Our, our daughter was born um, in December. So navigating, uh, having a two-year-old and then, and then the newborn has been a challenge, but, um, you know, it's the most important thing in my life. And as far as faith goes, I think, um, you know, th that helps me along the way, you know, when I, when I go into different challenges, when I face adversity, you know, my faith is, is the most important thing, even more than family. And it helps me be a better husband, helps me be a better father and a better, you know, football player. As, so that's my profession. And as far as um, what I want to instill in them, um, you know, I'd love them to, uh, to, to treat everybody with respect, to, to love everyone as they love um, themselves and, you know, do everything they can to please, to please our Lord and, and glorify him. Well said. Good luck on Sunday. Thank you. We're going to go next to Shelby Allen. Hey, good morning, Harrison. Good morning. Um, it was a strange postseason for veteran kickers like yourself, Will Lutz, and Justin Tucker. The, the only thing I can think of is a lack of fans. Would you say that was uh, was part of the reason why kickers struggled this postseason? Um, no, I, mean, I don't know. I, I think um, no, I wouldn't say fans. I and mean, you know we're all professionals and we all try to make kicks. And you know, Tucker he missed. Uh, some kicks, but with the Bills against the Bills, but it was super windy, and I guess he missed the one against the Titans. But it's a long fifty-plus yarder again, and in, in uh, difficult weather. I think when you get to the postseason, you just get to to colder and sometimes windier games. Um, and kind of like what I said earlier, when you look at your your whole body of work and what's your field goal percentage, it's, it's kind of the type of kicker you are. Just because you know you you miss a kick, I think a lot of people will say, "Oh, the the pressure was too much," or he choked, but. You know, Morton Anderson used to say or does say that there are no pressure kicks. You know, every kick's the same. Um, you know, I'm not familiar with Will Lutz. And then, uh, you know, for me, you know, obviously just just making extra points and making, you know, every kick you can. Again, it's the uh, every opportunity you're given. You got to take advantage of it and do your best. And as Morton Anderson says, or there are no pressure kicks and just take it one kick at a time. Appreciate it. We're going to go next to Austin. Hey, Harrison, how you doing? Good. Hey, uh, quick question. So uh, when you – do you have any superstitions before games that you that you do? Like I know as a pitcher in baseball, they do certain things. As a kicker, do you guys have any certain things that, or pregame rituals that you guys do? Um, I wouldn't call them superstitions, but I definitely have a routine, you know, and – that's every day of the week, basically. Uh, I have a certain routine that I follow on game day. There's a ton of stuff that I do. And um, I don't know if they're the reason why I'm successful, but 
I'd say I, I don't have to think about them anymore. I just do them and, you know, that can do deal with sleep, with nutrition, with um, your reps in warm up, what type of field goals you're hitting, um, working on your steps on the sideline, just different things I do that are very consistent. Um, and I try to keep them the same from game to game. And I think it's important for any kicker or any position to, to find a routine and stick to it. And I think that, um, you know, that, that helps you to be successful and then remain successful if you're just doing the same things uh, day to day, week to week. And if you do find that you're having some issues and maybe you have to tweak the routine a little bit, um, just slightly, you know, and, uh, you know, keep moving forward. But yeah, there, there are no like superstitions or anything. I just think it's uh, how do I prepare my, my mind and my body to be in the best possible shape to, uh, to make kicks when, when they matter. That's awesome. Congrats. Good luck this week. Thank you. We're going to go next to Hassan. Hey, Harrison, how's it going? Good. Good. We're coming from you from uh, your home state of Georgia. And I just wanted to ask you, um, this season has been filled with a lot of ups and downs for you. You're probably one of the better kickers that we've seen in the NFL for a very long time. And when those downs do happen and those mistakes happen, it's not because of your physical talent, but is it more so like mental aspects of the game? Take us through the mind of a kicker. And is it more like a quarterback throwing an interception on the next drive? You have to forget about it and just move on. I think it is similar in some ways to a quarterback throwing an interception. I'd say with a quarterback throwing an interception, I think there are more variables that can happen. A great play by the defender or, you know, a, a miss, a misstep by the receiver. You know, there definitely are variables from, from the kicker standpoint, you know, it's not just you out there. There's a snapper, there's a holder. We work as a unit together. And um, you know, like you said, if you, if you make a mistake, then you just got to move on to, to the next play. And, you know, I think sometimes it, it might be physical, you know, if um, if you have one thing that's maybe out slightly, then then maybe your ball is going to tail a certain way and you end up missing the kick. But it, in many ways it is mental. It's, you know, I missed it. Okay. I got to move on to the, to the next kick and not let the one before that affect the next one. So, you know, I mean, with my struggles with uh, some, some missed kicks, I think some of it was uh, physical, just adjusting the technique a little bit. And, um, you know, I'm very proud of the fact that I didn't miss any kicks back to back. You know, I was able to bounce back after a missed kick. And if there are any issues, you know, don't reinvent the wheel. Try to figure out how you can improve that as a unit and then, uh, and then move forward. And, you know, I'm, I'm focused on you know, if I have a poor performance in the game or miss a kick, then I'm focused on when we come back on Wednesday, making that next kick and having a good week of practice. And if I have a good week of practice and I go in that game confident, if something happens, then you kind of repeat the process and try to analyze and reverse engineer and figure out what went wrong and try to prevent that or reduce the probability of that happening again. Thanks, man. Good luck. Thank you. We're going to go next to Len Jennings. Harrison, I... Uh... Dustin Colquitt coming back for you guys on the surface that could look like it could be an uncomfortable situation, but why does it work with him coming back and how big of an impact does he have it on you guys as you're getting ready for your second Super Bowl, especially for Tommy, who's getting ready for his first. It's been good. You know, Dustin's got, um, you know, many, many years of experience. And if Tommy feels like there's something he needs to, uh, I don't know, to learn from, from Dustin's wisdom, he'll, he'll definitely ask. And Dustin's been great sharing advice and, trying to do whatever he can to help us as a unit. Um, and as a team, you know, he's, he's been in this position last year playing in the Super Bowl, And uh, it's, it's great just to have a veteran back on the squad and to have a, a great guy like Dustin in the locker room in general. But, you know, Dustin's a team player. He's with the, he's been a lifelong Chiefs um, player. And now he's back for this second Super Bowl run, Super Bowl 55. And he's just trying to help Tommy, trying to help me, trying to help James and almost being like a, like a coach in some sense and overseeing the, the full operation and helping us out. So it's, it's been great to, to have him back. And just for playing for your, in your second Super Bowl, uh, any advice that you're giving to Tommy as he gets ready for his first or how are you guys working together as a group? Tommy's been pretty um, cool and collected. You know, I think he's, uh, well, he hasn't really punted too much in these previous playoff games. He had one punt in the AFC championship game and didn't have one in the in the divisional game. But, you know, he's handled himself really well. And I think he's gonna do a great job in the Super Bowl game and treat it like any other game. And, 
perform at a high level like he's been doing. Thank you. And we're going to go next to Mark Tomkin. Hey, Harrison, uh, you, it looked like you had a pretty good game when you guys were in Tampa in November. What do you think of the, the kicking surface there? What do you think of kicking in that building? Is there anything unique or different about it uh, compared to anything else, that kind of thing? Um, I liked it. I thought it was a, a cool stadium to play in. You know, we played in November. The grass was a little bit more beaten in. But I think, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but for the Super Bowl, there should be uh, – new sod put down. I think it'll be Bermuda grass, which is great. That's the grass they had down in Miami for the Super Bowl last year. And then obviously I think it was Bermuda for when we played in the regular season game. And I think Miami had Bermuda when we played in the regular season game this season as well. And that's a grass that kickers love to kick on. So I think the service should be great. You know, it'll be a 70% chance of rain. I think as of right now, you know, we'll get good work here with, uh, you know, wet ball drills and kicking in the rain. We might have some rain this week as well here in Kansas City. But as far as the stadium makeup, you know, I didn't notice anything uh, unique about it that would affect kicking in a in a tough way. You know, I only played there once, but it didn't seem to be too windy. And I thought I did have a, a good performance. I thought I was kicking the ball well. And I, I'm excited to play there for the Super Bowl. And I think it'll be a, a good atmosphere and a good environment for it. Thank you. We're going to go next to Andrew. Hey, Harrison. It's Andrew Coffin from KMIZ in Columbia, Missouri. Uh, I'm curious, what has Andy Hill brought to your guys' special teams unit since he got here earlier this year? Coach Hill's done a great job. He's very detail-oriented. You know, he's, he's got a great routine with getting stuff done. Um, and I think he compliments Coach Tobe really well. Coach Tobe is really good with the, uh, with the X's and O's. And, um, you know, Coach Tope can really trust um, Andy Hill with with filling in all of the, the little gaps with um, player personnel when he uh, goes over all of the main special teams guys on the other team. He does a great job with that. He does a great job with, um, you know, helping us out as an operation with our operation times. And even if he's got to shag balls for us or, or whatever it may be, he's done a really good job, um, you know, high energy guy. Um, you know, very consistent with his attitude every day, energetic, um, wants to get better. And he's been a great addition, I think, to, uh, to, uh, to the special teams unit with, with Rod Wilson leaving after the Super Bowl last year. So he, you know, he's done a great job, and we're really um, glad to have him. And, you know, this will be his first Super Bowl. I know he grew up a, a Kansas City Chiefs fan. He's been coaching in Missouri. Um, yeah, so he's, he's really excited for the Super Bowl. Do they ever joke about Mizzou at all, Dave Tobin and Andy Hill back and forth? Uh, they talk about it, you know, a little bit, but uh, not too much, I'd say. Thank you. When we're going to go next to Seren Petro. Uh, Harrison, uh, two, two questions for you. Uh, one, and sorry, we're bouncing around from room to room. So if you already got asked this, I apologize. But um, do you, you know, you seem to focus a lot this past off season on distance. I remember talking back in training camp and, and being able to extend out your, do you, do you think you gave up a little bit of accuracy in, in your effort to try to extend your distance? Um, no, you know, I think percentage wise on field goals, this was actually my best year percentage wise, 92.6%. I'm pretty sure that was it. And then for field goals, you know, from 50 plus yards, I was, I don't know. If, I don't think I missed one. I was four for four or five for five. I think that the biggest issue is just um, mentally, you know, treating an extra point like any other kick and just dialing in uh, for those, for those extra points. But yeah, like I said, field goal percentage wise, it was my best, uh, best season yet. Only thing is maybe, you know, in the warm up, we would back it up to, 65 plus usually. And I think, um, you know, just trying to finish the warm up maybe with a shorter kick, more of a game realistic kick would, would be good. But because my distance has really increased, you know, we were able to make those 58 yarders um, against the Chargers. And I think that's allowed us to make the 50 yarders very confidently in cold, windy um, environments. So, you know, obviously the extra point percentage was lower than, than, uh, I, I've had my whole career, but um, again, I think that's less of a physical thing and more of a, just a, 
a mental thing and and treating an extra point like a, a game winning field goal. And, and just as a follow up, uh, uh, you know, it's team game, right? Everybody's got to do it. But even even in what you're doing, snap, hold, kick, everybody's got to be in sync. And you guys changed out one of those pieces. And I know Coach Tobe talked about it a lot. And, and Townsend coming in, we know he's a talented punter and everything. But it, it just like what what I mean, is it like a you know comfortable golf club? You change out, it's the same club, it's the same thing. But you know, there's just a little little bit different. You got to get used to. Did you did you notice that? And has that come along during the season to where maybe now you've got that comfort that you had? Uh, with Dustin uh, built up over several years. Yeah, definitely. Like you said, I was with Dustin for three years. Dustin played, I think, 15 seasons, you know, and he's still chugging along, still wanting to have a couple more seasons in there. But he takes a lot of pride in holding, and that's, you know, a skill set that you have to have besides punting. So you got to take a guy that's been playing 15 years. He's going to develop, and he's seen a lot of different situations with location of the ball, laces of the ball. He's going to be – uh, a really good a good holder. I think you see that uh, around the league usually. The older punters are really good holders. So Tommy's been a great holder, but I think when you don't have as many years piled up as a, a more veteran guy, you know, there's going to be certain situations that you're not used to seeing. Um, I thought Tommy and I had a great training camp together. You know, we didn't have as much of a as much time as we normally would with with OTAs and with preseason games, but we had a good. Um, preseason together and I think we've had a good season but um, that's a lot to expect for a, a rookie to just fill in you know for a 15-year vet um, but again the field goal percentage was really good um, and I've been very happy with Tommy and he's been a great a great holder and he's got a lot of talent like you said with punting and a lot of talent with holding as well and um, that's why it's also been good for for Dustin to be around uh, for these last couple of weeks to help and and I think Tommy and I have been on a Tommy James and I have all been, you know, in a great rhythm, I'd say, for these for these past couple of games. And we're gonna go next to Jonathan. Let's see. There we go. Oh, you're muted. All right, can you hear me now? Harrison, uh, Jonathan Simmons from Real Talk Sports here in Atlanta. I've got a chance to actually watch you uh, when you were at Tech here, not the flat. So uh, uh, I think that you have everybody here in Atlanta very, very proud. Uh, two questions. Number one, when you were at Georgia Tech, uh, when did you have the sensibility that you might be able to move on uh, to the next level at the NFL? And are you at all um, surprised at the level of success you've had since you've been in the league? I, I knew I had the talent to be in the NFL, but – I didn't really prove it to myself, I'd say, until my senior season. I was, you know, upper 80% field goal percentage, had a really good bowl game in the Tax Slayer Bowl, went five for five with a 50, I don't know, four yarder, something like that, 50 plus yarder. So that game gave me a lot of confidence. But again, I knew I, I had the talent, but I hadn't shown it yet. My first three seasons, I had made some big kicks, but hadn't put together a whole season of being consistent until my senior year. I knew I had a big kickoff leg and I was really fortunate to be invited to the combine. And I think that's where I was really able to surprise some coaches with, with the kickoff leg strength and then did really well on the field goals um, during the combine. And then from there with the private workouts, I thought I did a good job. You know, I got drafted to the Panthers in the seventh round and, and still, even though you get drafted, you know, maybe it was because it was lower, but still you see guys that get drafted high and don't perform well. It's just different when you get to the league, you have to really, um, you know, perform under pressure. And um, I thought I had a good training camp, but even then it's like, you haven't really made kicks in a game. So to get the opportunity to come here um, to Kansas city, I had the Monday night game where I was able to make some field goals. And that gave me a lot of confidence for the rest of my career to say, you know, I, I have the ability, I can make kicks under pressure on the biggest stage. Now I just got to be consistent and focus on my routine and doing that from week to week, game to game. Um, so I think after my rookie year, you know, when I, I had such a good rookie year, I kind of knew the formula that I needed to do for, for routine and practice and off season to, to continue that. And I think I have for these last, uh, four years of my career and I'm hoping to continue it as a, you know, healthy kicker and just treating every game basically like it's a Super Bowl and focusing on, you know, every kick. 
We appreciate you. We have a former jacket that's supposed to be joining us tonight, Joe Hamilton, on our show. So we play this, and uh, you can see I'm wearing the uh, antique white, blue, and gold. And uh, we we uh, look forward to uh, seeing what you guys are going to do in the Super Bowl. One last question. Now, I, I heard you talk a lot about the grass. How much do kickers really study the actual grass, the layout of the turf before they go into a particular game? I don't know if they, they study it, but they're definitely aware of it, I'd say. And maybe not the younger kickers, but I think going on year four for me, uh, you know, whatever I can figure out to help me kick better, I'm, I'm going to try to do. And, you know, if I know it's Bermuda grass, obviously with it being grass, I don't want to kick a ton on the turf field. I mentioned earlier that it's cold here in Kansas City, so kicking indoors, we can at least get the temperature up. But at the same time, you do want to still kick on grass um, and get that experience. And again, Bermuda grass is like the, the best grass you can kick on as a kicker. So if, if I can kick well outside here in Kansas City when it's cold, you know, on on grass that's basically not Bermuda grass, then I feel confident going into a stadium that that has some Bermuda grass. I'd say the biggest difference is, is it a grass field? Is it, is it a turf field? Is it a turf field? What type of turf? Because that's definitely different. And then if it's a grass field, you know, if it's a Bermuda, then you can definitely feel confident going in the game. And if it's, if it's not, maybe you have uh, to, I guess, probably just slow down your swing and be a little bit more um, patient, you know, with your approach to the ball and, and not quite as aggressive. Almost sounds like a golfer. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right. And we're going to go next to Santiago. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Batker, you have played a few years in Kansas. You have played in the cold. You have played in a different grass. How do you think that the change of weather playing in Florida, a warmer place, can affect the kick? Well, I think the, the warmer the environment is that you're kicking in, I think the ball's going to bounce off your foot more. I think you can indent the ball more with your, your kicking foot when it's warmer, and then that's going to make the ball go farther, basically. So, you know, that's all good things as a kicker. Warmer weather definitely is a, is a plus. And if you can kick outside when it's cold here in Kansas City, then when you go to a, a warmer atmosphere like in, in Tampa, then, uh, you know, it's going to be even easier. So, you know, I'm practicing out here when it's cold or the few days that we go in the indoor, taking advantage of the warmer weather and trying to just recreate the, the game day environment that we're going to have for the Super Bowl. But, um, yeah, I always say if, if you can kick in cold weather, then you can definitely kick in the warm weather. You know, if you're only kicking in warm weather and then you play a cold game, that's definitely a lot more difficult as a kicker. Thank you. We're going to go next to Randy. Hey, Harrison, thanks for uh, giving us a few minutes today, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, two quick questions here for you. One, can you talk about the mentality of uh, going back to the Super Bowl on how the, the feeling is in the locker room compared to last year as it was the first time and now you guys are going back to repeat? Uh, and then also the possibility of repeating, not a lot of – franchises have the opportunity to win one Super Bowl or even some of the great players in this league getting to one Super Bowl. You guys are going for two in a row and put yourself in some rare air. How is the mentality for you as an individual player and also the locker room and for, both, for both of those situations? Um, for me, I'm trying to treat every game like it's a Super Bowl, you know, so we're going into this big game, but I've been treating every week before this as if it was the, the most important game of the season, and it, it was. Um, I think uh, as far as from the locker room standpoint, the fact that we were in the Super Bowl last year and we won it, you know, we, we've been here before. We know what to expect. I don't think guys are as as wide eyed and maybe uh, surprised about about the, um, you know, the, the situation that we're in. You know, we know our routine. We need to stick to that. And um, this game is going to be like any other game. I think the guys are, are very uh, prepared. Going into this, well, I guess we have one more week of, of preparation, but I'd say everyone's treating it like any other game, and uh, we've done a great job preparing for all the past games, so um, we're not going to switch up the routine at all for this game, and, and guys are, I think, um, more settled, I'd say, you know, and when, when you're playing the Super Bowl for the first time, maybe you start changing stuff, you start freaking out a little bit, um, but this season, I really feel like guys are, are um, you know, they're, they're they're confident. They're they're going to go into it like it's uh like it's any other game and and do our thing. 
And we're going to go last to Joshua Allen. Hey, Harrison, how are you doing? Good, thank you. There's been a lot of talk about the struggles of kickers in Tampa Bay and the swirling winds in the end zone. And have you heard anything about that? And, and how do you plan on you know combating that if there is some winds uh, this Sunday? Um, not really. You, you see some some stuff here and there about it, but I don't know. Most kickers, I guess, try to think that their stadium is the hardest to kick in. And uh, I'm probably no different from that. Arrowhead definitely gets windy, very gusty. I've also played in, you know, played at Baltimore, played in Cleveland Browns, Heinz Field, Pittsburgh. So I feel like I've, I've played in a lot of places. And I've also already played in uh, um, the Buccaneers, Raymond James, Raymond James Stadium. So, you know, I, I feel like every, every stadium's unique. Every stadium has wind. Um, and you kind of figure it out in the warm up what the wind's doing and, and trust your ball flight. And hopefully the, the ball goes through the uprights. Thank you. All good, I believe. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, no problem.